Welcome to Solar Selling with Trevor White and today I'm going to talk about uh, buying some anchor chain. I need to get a new anchor chain for Tintin. I have uh, been looking around for a little while so I'm heading back to New Zealand soon. I'm going to finish all the uh, jobs on Tintin. One of those jobs is replacing the anchor chain. Anchor chain is 20 to 30 years old. There's not enough of it and um, I've done the sums and I don't think it's worth uh, Acid sinking or acid um, washing it and then re galvanizing it. I think it's uh, not economical for myself. And I would need to add more chain. That means I'm you know, adding a link. There's always a failure point in a link. What I would like to do is just get a full continuous length of chain, good quality, that is going to last me 20 years, maybe 30 years. So that's the challenge in today. You know, like there is so much information around, there is a lot of different manufacturers. Not every manufacturer is producing good chain. Uh, they're all generally charging the same, but they're not all producing good chain. So I'm trying to find someone who is producing good quality chain and it's made to a standard. So at this stage, yeah, I'm looking in New Zealand. That's where the yacht is. And um, the intent is to get probably 100 to 120 metres of chain, which should cover my needs. May even get a little bit longer. I've, I've got to make my anchor locker a little larger. So at the moment, it's, it's quite a large anchor locker, but it, as the chain falls into it, it uh, mounts up and then um, jams, uh, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm looking at ways to increase the volume at the bottom end because the there is room, but it's there's not enough depth. So if I make it a bit wider, I think, and then I'll put some sort of a, a mechanism in there to spread the chain. I should be able to get more anchor chain in there and uh, it should spread out and create the, um, the the volume that I need for more anchor chain. So if I think I can get 120 metres in there, maybe maybe even 150 metres. You know, ideally I need 100 metres, that's what I'm sort of working on. I've been operating off uh, about 60 metres and rope and in Australia never had a problem. I, everywhere I went I could anchor quite comfortably with 60 metres of chain. There's nearly uh, all the anchorages were fine. Sometimes you're a bit strung out. When I went to New Zealand, yeah, it's a uh, it's struggle. You know, you're really struggling to get a, an anchor down in some places with, with that amount of chain. And then, you know, you get up to Tonga and um, New Zealand, I didn't have enough chain. Like, there's some anchorages that are 20, 25, 30 metres deep. And it became a problem for me. I was still, you know, I have uh, another 80 metres, I think, attached to the... Well, I had 100 metres, but I had to chop 20 metres off when um, the rope got jammed. So I've got you know, about 80 metres of rope attached to the chain. So, you know, I can put out 150 metres of road, but it's not all chain. And I prefer all chain. You know, my rope is still 18 mil. It's quite strong. It's got a bit of stretch in it. That's a good thing. But I would prefer to have all chain. So at the moment, I've been looking around, spoke to couple of distributors, chain distributors, uh, wholesalers um, and a, a chandlery and I'm you know, looking at grade 30, grade L, you know I'm buying 10 mil um, short link galvanized chain. Uh, I've looked at stainless steel, I'm still not sold on stainless steel, I mean I like the qualities of it, uh, I think it's resistant to abrasion and, and those aspects but I've always had this issue with uh, stainless steel failing under load. You know, it, it's impossible to um, identify if there's a failure in stainless steel until it explodes or fails. Whereas with galvanised, if there's a failure in there, you can see the, the rust starts to come through in the metal before it fails. So that is my reasoning to go to galvanising. Galv is also cheaper. Um, I could also go high, high tensile, but I don't think I need that. I'd have to change the gypsy on my um, on my windlass. I've got an old windlass, I've just had it completely rebuilt in Fiji, so I don't really want to um, change the windlass. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get a, a, um, a new gypsy for it, I'd have to get one made. That would be a thousand bucks probably anyway. So I'm spending somewhere in the vicinity to three to five thousand dollars in New Zealand to replace my chain. And what I want is chain that's going to last 20 years, minimum. That's what I want. Um, you know, the Pacific cruising the Pacific, cruising the islands is, is abrasive on chain. It's hard work. It gives your, um, your chain a real workout in the coral and 
coral sands and rock and everywhere else you're anchoring. You know, occasionally you get a nice sandy bottom, but it's not always the case. So I want 20 years and I want good quality chain. I don't want my chain to fail. The chain I have at the moment is as rusty as, um, and it's probably lost a lot of its galvanizing in the last five years. Um, you know, when I bought the boat, it was actually not too bad, but then it just started to, a lot more use. Uh, New Guinea, Queensland, places like that, and it's just started to strip the um, galvanizing off, plus it's old. So, out with the old, in with the new, and the challenge is to get that good quality chain, and ideally certified. So I'm looking at 766 at the moment. There's a choice between Chinese and Italian manufacturers. People are saying the Italian stuff is better. It's it's certified uh, to a rated strength, whereas the Chinese isn't. I'm still looking. I'm still trying to find someone who um, will provide me with certified, good quality, strong chain, you know, grade 30 or L or 766. You know, the stronger the better. And I'm still trying to get the best price. You know, I'm a cruising sailor. I, um, I'm always looking for the best price on everything. You know, the money I save on... Um, on chain, I can put into the next project, and there's several projects on the go at the moment. So that's my plan. If you know of someone who provides good quality galvanised chain in New Zealand, leave me a, a note in the comments. I'd be super keen to um, to find them. Uh, if you have any other ideas or uh, thoughts on the topic, leave me leave me a, a note comment or drop me an email. Again, what I learn. And when I buy the chain, I'm going to put that in the video and tell everybody where and why I bought it, uh, what I got, how I think it performs over the next 12 months, two years. And that way people can you know, go back and have a look at uh, where I bought it from and how it's, how it's performed. You know, so if it's shit chain, then the manufacturer will, will find out. If it's a good chain, then they get a, a, a pat in the back as well. So thanks for joining me and I'll... Uh, See you next time. Safe sailing. Catch you later.